Well, g'day, Max here again. Welcome back to the shop. So today's video is going to be uh, pretty well just a turning job, and we get to have our do our first job in the hair and lathe, and <laughs> yeah, we we get to learn some of the idiosyncrasies of that machine, and then we we will also use the smaller AL 960 lathe. Uh, as well at some point in the job. This will be a two-part series as it's just a bit too long to cram into one part because I'll spend too much time waffling <laughs> in the first part. So um, let's look down and we'll have a look at the uh, drawing that I drew up to make our wood lathe spindle. Oh, and lastly, if it does look like the video sort of chops and changes around a little bit, that's because it does. Um, I'll sort of on it and off it and on it and off it and uh, this and that was going on. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't very often do a video that sort of does gloss over certain parts, but unfortunately, that's what happened this time. So, <laughs> stick around and hopefully you'll enjoy it. Right, this is our project for the day. So it's just a straight shaft. It's actually a spindle out of a, well, for a wood lathe. So we've got our M30 by 3.5 thread, a register, a larger diameter to accommodate a couple of spanner flats, bearing journal, clearance area, bearing journal, a fine series M20 thread, and the tail of the shaft is 18 millimeter to accept the pulley. So overall, yeah, it's 300, just over 300 mil long. Uh, we have to do this in the in the heron lathe, as our smaller lathe cannot accommodate this thread, the 3.5 pitch thread. So we'll get as much of this done as we can in the heron. At least we'll have we'll get the thread done at the very least and the rest of the shaft roughed out. Um, we'll, we'll see how this thing goes holding for tolerance. Uh, the, the fine thread there will probably definitely do that in the smaller lathe. But, uh, yeah, we'll just see how, how, how the lathe goes. We'll just do as much as we can. So we did a quick preliminary check just to ensure that the lathe was indeed cutting 3.5 millimeter pitch thread and it's doing that exactly. So this is the material that we're going to make our shaft out of and like we just said we did a preliminary test to make sure the lathe's cutting the correct amount of threads per inch and I just took a light, very light skim cut. I just want to see how the diameter's looking. So if we come up near the chuck uh, we got 1.680 tailstock end 1.678 so we've got a two thousand difference between there and there um, that's really I'm not too concerned about that however in the middle we've got a barrel shape so in the middle 1.682 so we've we have a, a two thousand barrel shape in the middle so I don't know what's causing that, it could be slight wear in the bed um, and it also is where we come over the gap so it could be we might have to pull a gap out and make sure all that is seated and aligned correctly so that's a job for another day so we're going to start off down the thread end we'll get this turned down to the correct diameter and uh, we'll, well which will be the register diameter first and then we'll turn down the um, thread diameter.
plus 1.653 right on the knocker. So that's the diameter for our section where the spanner flats go. So the next diameter down is a 32mm diameter or 1.261 for the register. Fair way to go yet. Yeah. One point two seventy, 
and we're aiming for 1.261 so I'll leave that be that's the the short area up this end will be for the register for a chuck so we're a bit oversized there so we'll get our thread done we'll finish this diameter the same time we do the bearing journals that way everything's concentric so now we'll bring part of this down to 30 millimeters for our thread We've got six thou to go and we're down to our finished threading size. One point one eighty one. We're five. We're um, half a thou under, but that's fine for a thread. There's no great tolerance on the OD. So we'll get the threading tool set up now, and that's the section we have to do our M thirty by three point five thread on. So this is a tool holder that I made when I was an apprentice. It's just a universal general tool holder for holding oddball bits of high speed steel and larger size lathes so we'll get our threading tool set up and have a crack at this thread so because our threading tool is ground in a tool and cutter grinder this side of the tool we can use as a reference to set the tool square so we're not dicking around uh, with a thread angle gauge which is always awkward to do at the best of times trying to square up your tool so we can just indicate the side of it and we know that our tool is square because it was all ground square referenced off these sides in the tool and cutter grinder we have our compound angled around to 29 and a bit degrees um, as we will just be coming in and cutting off the leading edge of the tool so we won't be plunging straight in in this case which i always do for the smaller threads but as this is a bigger thread 3.5 pitch we'll just come in on the uh, compound slide okay we'll take a scratch pass so we can just confirm that we are cutting 3.5 millimeter pitch uh, by the way this is an imperial lathe it's an imperial lead screw so on such a short thread we probably won't disengage the half nuts I feel like if I feel a need I will but yeah generally I'll, I'll try and keep them in on on this but we'll see how we go coming up to that shoulder And yes, we're right on 3.5 millimeter pitch, so we'll keep chugging away.
Okay, I'll bring you back when I'm a bit closer to depth. I'm just taking it slow and steady steady as I said this I've never cut a thread on this lathe before and uh, we've got to learn if there's any faults with the machine as we're going so we'll bring you back when we're closer to size okay we're getting close now the tools performing fine um, I'm gonna have to get a set of wires and we'll just get a measurement over thread wires as I lost one of me um, on the dial here where I was returning back to zero the thing came loose so I lost all my settings so the last few cuts have just been pure straight in feed cuts so we were taking our cuts on the compound but uh, I have to feed in pure in feed cuts so we don't get a step so the last few cuts I'll still do on the compound but I just want to get a measurement because I think we're pretty close now. Okay, we'll try this for size. Um, my pitch thread wires are still packed away somewhere in a box from moving and I cannot find them I do have a commercial nut so we'll try that goes on it's a little bit little bit tight so we'll take another couple of thou off Okay, we'll try that. That's it, we've got it. Well that fits. So we still have to machine the register on the end there. And that's what um, pulls up inside here for the register on the chuck. And that's what the chuck pulls up onto and it makes the chuck concentric, not the thread. So we can continue roughing this out to size. Well, okay, our threading tool did a great job. You can see the other reason too now is why I've ground the point offset. It's because we were cutting straight up to a shoulder with no relief. And our nut fits on perfect. So I guess we'll get the rest of the shaft roughed out now and go from there. And someone's bound to ask, why don't I cut a th thread relief in there first? Well, it's not my personal preference to do that automatically. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Generally, I'll do it later, but sometimes I do it first. 
Um, I was brought up to screw cut straight up to a shoulder with no reliefs, and that's how I was taught. It's the way I've always done it. It's why I will always do it, because if you get in the habit of having to have a, script, a, a thread relief in there, one day you'll come across a job where you have to screw cut to a shoulder, and you're going to struggle to do it because you haven't trained yourself to do it. So thread reliefs are the easy way out. Um, that's why I generally um, don't do it all the time, but sometimes I do. So curiosity's got the better of me. While I've got a piece of material in this lathe, and we're still figuring out the idiosyncrasies of this thing, this machine will cut up to an 80 millimeter pitch thread. So I've just slipped a, into the 80 millimeter pitch um, range on the change gears. So I've got a texter. Let's let's take a try. We'll see how it goes. Well, <laughs> and indeed, we have an 80 millimeter pitch. Right, let's get our shaft roughed down to size. Just above 25 mils where we've got to end up. Okay, this is starting to give a bit of an issue with a bit of chatter in the middle of the bar here. And we're only approximately 30 mil diameter. We've still got another five mil to come off the diameter. It shouldn't be doing that. So I did reduce the speed and that didn't have much effect. I increased the feed and that didn't have much effect. So I changed the insert from an 08 radius roughing insert to an 04 radius finishing insert and that helped a bit but then it started again so what I'm going to try is um, I don't know this center came with the lathe so I'm going to try the center out my other lathe this is a Morse Taper 3 center in a Morse Taper 3 to Morse Taper 5 adapter so um, yeah I'll swap the center out we'll take another cut and see if it does anything Right, we're roughed out as much as we're going to go at this stage in this lathe. Um, the rear section here still has to come down to 18 millimeters. Now, with regards to our chatter problem we were getting before, I did swap the center over to a known good one and it didn't really have much effect. 
Reducing the nose radius on the tool didn't really have much effect. Dropping the RPMs down, increasing the feed had no effect. Brought the RPMs up to 650 and that helped it quite a lot. And it's just started chattering in the last oh, 40 millimeters here. So I think now we'll um, swap over and finish this out in the smaller lathe. Um, I don't want to run this lathe. I'm not well. I'm not going to run this lathe and this chuck any faster than 650 rpm. So yeah, we'll uh, hop over to the small lathe now. And at least the small lathe too has got flood coolant. We don't have. And this is quite a bit of heat in this, so um, at least we'll be able to cool it off. So off to the small lathe. Okay, we're just going to go a bit of wonky handheld here on my phone. So we have the part now set up in our smaller lathe. And we've got to true this part up. So up near the chuck, which is running dead true. When we come down to the other end of the part, we've got a 10 thou wolf in it. Now we haven't got the centre in, and we don't want the centre in. So, if I put the centre in, watch what happens to this indicator. Moves 8 thou. That's no good. Uh, quite likely, if we did that and carried on machining, we'd machine our part to size, but when we release it out the lathe, uh, our rear bearing journal and our front bearing journal uh, would be a little bit out of whack with each other, which is no good. So Sometimes if your chucks a bit worn you can correct that by just tapping that end down with a copper hammer But this chuck is not worn. So you're going to be fighting the jaws So the only way around that is to slip in the little bits of copper and that will allow The part that we're gripping to sit a little bit crooked in the lathe chuck but it will allow the back end to be, we can tap that true. That way we're not putting any stress into the shaft due to the way we're clamping it uh, when we machine it. So that's something that's very important, yeah. Never use the tail stock to flex the, the part over. So I'll get this trued up and we'll bring you back. So because this lathe is a long way off being knackered, the tail stock, as it should be, is slightly above centre. What the idea is, they wear in before they wear out. So, what I've done here is just pack the rear of the tailstock with paper. That tilted the centre down as what I found the dial indicator was dropping off when I was engaging the centre because the centre was higher than the centre height of the lathe if you get my drift and yeah that's just a quick and easy way to get around that so that gives our shaft um, totally clamped totally supported with no stress on it whatsoever pulling it either way up down in or out so our shaft sitting in its natural position so we can go ahead and finish machine it now so we've got our copper shims in now we're clocked in dead true up this end and we're tapped in dead true down that end and our center's not in so uh, what we have to well what ideally what we want to achieve is to bloody dial indicator post in the way <laughs> when we engage our center we don't want to really see that move more than thou, half a thou. So we'll engage this. Let's get engage our centre. See, it still in a, hasn't moved it. What? Well, it's still with. Well, it's within a thou anyway, which is quite good. Right, that's our shaft done. I didn't actually film any of it because up getting on to this stage, it was just all straight, um, straight turning. 
So it's just an 18 mil diameter there for a pulley. Steps up to 20 for a bearing fit in this area. What we still have to do is cut that thread there, so I'll film that. Uh, that's clearance on the 25 mil diameter bearing fit up in the neck there. Uh, that's just for spanner flats. That's our registers all done. Uh, what I will do, looking at this chuck, we're pretty close on dimension between the end of the thread and the end of the register, uh, which is just this area here. So I will put in a grooving tool and I will just nip that last half a thread out just in case there's other things that have to screw on that may have a shallower uh, register possibly. Oh, and we've got the hole to drill and tap in the end of it too. So I'll, uh, let's get a tool set up and we'll cut this uh, clearance groove in here. But it'll come out very well on um, and on size. Interesting thing too, when we were our first roughing cuts that we took in this lathe, we didn't have any issue with chatter. So it's something we're going to have to investigate in the other lathe, whether it's, I don't know, maybe it could be, we'll have to check the headstock bearing adjustment. Could be any number of things. So we'll get to that one on another day. So yeah, we'll get a tool set up and do this groove. Right, just one point to note. If it looks like I've done this turning operation in an ass about fashion, <laughs> that's because I have. And that's all due to the fact of having to cut this thread first in the other lathe as this lathe cannot cut this pitch thread now being the first thread i've ever cut in that other lathe like we've only just got it powered up and running and it does have a few cantankerous faults um, we wanted to give ourselves the best chance so the material was long enough if we cocked up that first thread there was enough length for a second bite at the cherry. Normally we would have machined this completely the other way around so we're just turning up to our shoulders in this direction. We could have roughed it all out, finished turned it, done that thread, cut it off to length, grip this end in a collet and then just come back last and machine this thread here. That, that would have been my um, preferable way but yeah. <laughs> We don't always get to do it our preferable way. this one to a close here uh, I'm just going to set up the bridge port with the indexing head so we can do the spanner flats uh, reason I'm using the indexing head is because we need to get back into our JFMT lathe and get this bloody pinion gear cut for the carriage or the apron so I'll kill two birds with one stone set the indexing head up and do both jobs at that same time well, not at the same time, obviously. I can't cut a gear and cut spanner flats on the same machine at the same time. But <laughs> you get the drift. So anyway, cheers. Thanks for watching. And yeah, we'll finish this shaft out next video. And then we're back onto the JFMT pinion. <laughs> and if you ever wonder... Well, does this bloke ever change his clothes or has he only got one, one set of clobber he wears every time? It's because sometimes the intros and outros, whatever you want to call them, are done. There might be a couple done on the same day. And as like this has been a real mix up for me with uh, the last couple of videos. I've had, you know, recording them at the same time. So anyway, that's the story there. So cheers. <laughs>